Hello, and welcome to another video here at the N10 Hockey Channel. Today we've got a couple of things to discuss, including a few injuries to talk about as we have gotten some more bad and good news on the injury front for some NHL teams, as well as a couple of trade rumors involving the Arizona Coyotes, Vancouver Canucks, and Columbus Blue Jackets. We'll get to all of that coming up right now. Hello and welcome to another video here at the End to End Hockey Channel. Now normally I would kick things off with a signing or two that has happened over the past week, but with the season in full swing, it being the second month of the NHL season and nearing the quarter mark of the season with U.S. Thanksgiving fast approaching, there's not going to be very many signings at this point in time, and there hasn't been over the last week, so... No signings to discuss right now, so we're going to go straight into the injury front. There have been a couple of key injuries that have happened, and some guys have come back from them. I uh, will start off with the Arizona Coyotes. Now, this is big, and we'll talk about this more further in the video, but the Arizona Coyotes activated Nick Schmaltz and Jacob Chikorin off of injury reserve for yesterday's game against the National Predators. Now, Schmaltz did get into a couple of games earlier in the season, did get injured, and has been out ever since. He's missed probably... A bit over a month now. He looked good in his return. He played good top six minutes and I think after the season he had last year he's going to be a big piece of this Arizona team moving forward. So getting Schmaltz back is a huge piece for the Arizona Coyotes and really good for them. As for the bigger piece that they got back that was Jacob Chickard. Now Chickard had missed the end of last season and the first month and a half of this year due to an injury. And that as well as sort of holding up any sort of trade talks around Chikrin in the first month of the year. But now that he's back, things will probably pick up. We'll talk about it more later. But getting Chikrin back on the ice was the first step to making that happen. Chikrin looked good. He didn't get any points in yesterday's game against the Predators. But he did look like he was back to his old self again. A little bit rusty, but a few more games and he should be back to the Jacob Chikrin who scored 18 goals in the short season a few years ago. But... Definitely getting Chikrin and Schmaltz back for this Arizona team is huge. The Coyotes have not done overly well, but I think they've done better than a lot of people thought. I thought they could probably near the 500 mark by the end of the season, and they're hanging around there, so I don't think they're doing too badly, especially for this young roster. But getting Chikrin and Schmaltz back into the mix is good. As for the bad news for the Coyotes, they put forward Zach Cassian now on injury reserve. Now, Cassian had been playing quite well with the Arizona Coyotes, but missed over the past week with a injury and was day-to-day. -day. So this is just for roster purposes. He can come back whenever he's ready. But given the fact that they need to activate Schmalz and Chicken and didn't have enough room on the roster, a short-term fix was to put Cassian on injury reserve. So not too big of an injury concern. I do still think Cassian could be back in the next week or two. And he's a bottom six forward, so he won't be too much missed. But... It is bad for Arizona to put another person back on injury reserve, so hopefully Cashin can heal and get back to being with the Arizona Coyotes soon. Next, we're going to talk about the Ottawa Senators. Now, they had good and bad news on the injury front. So, on the good side, they were able to activate over the past week Artem Zub, who was on IR for the past few weeks due to an injury. Now, Shabbat's still in injury reserve, so losing Shabbat and Zub was Horrible for the sense that they're top D pair, their best two defensemen. Their defense was already not good to start the season, so losing a guy like Shabbat and Zub was horrible. But getting Zub back is good. He gives that team another good piece. He's a great defenseman. He can put up points if need be. He's really good on that top pair, and getting him back was huge, especially with the Sens so far not doing too well defensively having a lot of defensive issues getting one of their top defensemen back was pretty big but as for the bad news they recently called up Bernard Docker a young prospect really good player he's been putting up a lot of points in the AHL and looks like he could be a future top four defenseman for the Ottawa Senators but he has been injured and is now going to miss at least a month due to an injury so he's been placed in IR. Now, Bernard Docker has only gone into a few games, but he was sort of the Zub and Shabbat replacement, trying to help this team be a bit more defensive and lock down games, but they can't catch a break on the defense. So now Shabbat's injured. He's probably still going to miss a little bit of time. And now Bernard Docker's also on IR. So the injuries just keep on coming for Ottawa, and that blue line just cannot get any healthier. So hopefully Bernard Docker can continue to 
get healthy and continue to improve and hopefully he can be back maybe before the month's timeline. As for the Blue Jackets, we talked last week they had a f slew of injuries. They were getting really banged up left and right and they continue to get banged up. Over the past week, they've placed more players on IR. We talked about Line A and how he's going to be out three or four months. Well, now he's been placed on IR. We talked about how Wierenski is going to be out long-term for the rest of the season due to a separated shoulder. He's been placed on long-term injury reserve, so those are moves they probably had to make. Wierenski being placed on long-term injury reserve frees up cap space, and Line A being placed on IR frees up a roster spot. But they've placed even more players on injury reserve. Jake Bean, a good third pair of defensemen who have been playing a little bit more of a top four role with the loss of like Wierenski and Boquist and Blankenberg, has now also been placed on injury reserve due to injury. I don't think he should miss too much time due to the injury, but Bean is a pretty good piece of this Blue Jackets decor. He usually plays third pair role on the left side, so losing a good young piece like Bean is going to be hard for the Jackets. And then in net, they have lost Elvis Merzlikens to an injury. So losing Merzlikens is pretty bad. Merzlikens has done okay this year. Once again, with the decor in front of him, he's not done overly great. But he's their starting goaltender, and he's done okay. I still think that if the defense improved, he could do a lot better. But now the tandem, Korpisalo and Tarasov, who I don't think are too bad of a tandem. Korpisalo is a backup goalie. Tarasov is probably next year's backup goalie for the Jackets. So I don't think it's too bad to leave the goaltending tandem in the hands of Korpisalo and Tarasov, but I do think that the Merzlikens injury will definitely hurt the Blue Jackets, and hopefully Merzlikens can recover soon so he can get back into game action. Over in Tampa Bay, they swapped the fencemen on injury reserve. Zach Bogosian, who was on injury reserve for the entire season up to this point, was able to be activated by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Bogosian is a good third pair defenseman on a very cheap contract for the next couple of years and can really help be another good defensive piece for the Tampa Bay Lightning. I know that they lost Ryan McDonough in the offseason, so they need all the defensive help they can get, and I think Bogosian is going to help them a lot. He's a good third pair defenseman, so I think that he should be able to help the Bolts defensively. He's a good veteran forward, too, so good to get him back off of injury reserve. But due to an injury that occurred over the weekend, they had to place defenseman Cal Foote on injury reserve as well. Now, Foote has been doing okay. He has been still sort of that third pair role, sort of the same role that Bogosian has, but he could still play second pair minutes. He's been up and down the lineup, being a scratch a few times, so Foote's been all over the place. I still think he's a good top six, maybe top four defenseman for the Lightning. So losing him is going to be pretty bad for the Tampa. Hopefully he can recover soon because I think Foot is a pretty good defenseman. But with the amount of defensemen that the Bolts have right now with like Felipe Myers, Ian Cole, Hayden Fleury, they have enough to make do without Foot. So hopefully Foot can return and then bolster that defensive core even more. And maybe they have a fully healthy decor when he gets activated. Over in Montreal, there's just one injury I like to talk about, but it's a big one. As offseason acquisition, Mike Matheson was activated over the weekend and played his first game on Saturday of the season and of his career in Montreal. Now, he was dealt to the Canadians as a part of the Jeff Petrie deal that sent Matheson from Pittsburgh to Montreal. So, he was viewed as a good top four defenseman coming into Montreal. They really do like him. So getting him back into the lineup is huge. He ended up starting the season on injury reserve due to an injury he suffered in training camp. And he just couldn't get healthy. But he's finally healthy. And he's now going to probably play a consistent top four role. And that Canadian's decor is about as healthy as it's going to get right now. They started the season off with Edmondson and Matheson on injury reserve. They now have those two guys back. So they now have a good decor. They currently have eight on their roster. So they have younger guys like... Jordan Harris, Arbor Jackai, Caden Gooley, along with a few veterans like David Savard, Mike Matheson, Joel Edmondson. This decor could be good. I don't think it will be great over the next few months. They still have a lot to learn, but getting a guy like Matheson back to improve this decor, give them a more veteran leadership, was going to be pretty good for the Canadians, and hopefully they can continue to do well. And next, I want to just talk about some goalie injuries in general. There have been a lot of goalie injuries over the past week. So first, Marc-Andre Fleury was placed in injury reserve with the Minnesota Wild. 
and he's now going to miss some time. It shouldn't be, I don't think, too drastic. A couple weeks, but Fleury is the starter in Minnesota, so losing him for any significant period of time is bad for the Wild. Their, their season's done okay. They've been in and out of the playoffs. They're currently around the 500 mark, so I think they could be okay, but losing Fleury is going to be pretty bad for them. As for the Buffalo Sabres, they had to place goalie Eric Comrie on injury reserve due to an injury he sustained over the weekend. So Comrie is a pretty good goaltender, but I think they can live with a tandem of Craig Anderson and Uka Pekalukunen for the time being. Pekalukunen was called up and is the goalie of the future for the Buffalo Sabres, so getting him into a few games is not too bad, and I don't think Comrie should be out too long either. So hopefully Comrie can get back soon, but I think the Sabres should be okay for now. And finally, Philip Grubauer was able to be activated by Seattle Kraken. Now, Grubauer has not been the best goalie in Seattle this year. It's obviously been Martin Jones. And Grubauer's tenure in Seattle over the past two years hasn't really gone well. He's not the dominant goalie he was in Colorado. So hopefully, he can get back in stride and help the Kraken win games. I know a lot of the starts have been going to Martin Jones recently because of his great play. But if Grubauer can find his stride, he's still a good goaltender in my opinion. He can still be a 1A, maybe even a starter. So if Grubauer can string a few games together, he should still be okay. So I think that the Kraken getting him back should definitely improve their goaltending tandem. Grubauer and Jones is a lot better than Jones and Helberg. And I think that if Grubauer can go on a run, hopefully get a few starts, he can be a good goaltender for the Kraken. But that's all the injuries I want to talk about for right now. Now let's go over to the trade rumors. And starting with the Arizona Coyotes, they have a lot of defensemen in play right now, apparently. So we're going to start with Connor Timmins. Over the week, on the 32 Thoughts segment in Hockey Night in Canada, Elliot Freeman said that the Arizona Coyotes may be listening on defenseman Connor Timmins right now. Now, Timmins was the key piece in the Darcy Kemper trade, the trade that sent Darcy Kemper to the Colorado Avalanche last offseason. And Connor Timmins was the big prospect going back. Timmins has not had the greatest of development. He's been injured a ton. Concussions, some other things. He's recently on a conditioning stint with the Arizona Coyotes. So a lot of injuries have derailed Timmons' career, but I still think he can be a good third pair defenseman, maybe even second pair, if he can actually stay healthy and get into NHL action. So Arizona may just be thinking that the development's not going too well and he hasn't been able to get any games so maybe trade him for like maybe another young prospect who's not doing too well. He's also really cheap right now, so 800000 on the cap hit for the next year. And then he'll be a restricted free agent at the end of the season. So Timmons would actually be a cheap acquisition and could still probably play good on the third pair. He's probably going to have to get into a few games to show he's healthy and he can be good. But Timmons is definitely a guy to keep an eye on. Arizona's got a lot of defensemen on the block right now, so Timmons is definitely another one to keep an eye on. I think a young team like a Buffalo or an Ottawa or Detroit who could try and improve the defense, or even a cap strap team like a Vancouver or a Montreal could also be interested in acquiring Timmons. He's a good third pair of defenseman who's cheap, so I think there should be no shortage of interest if the Arizona players are actually interested in moving Timmons, and I think that Hopefully, Timmons can find a new home quickly in the NHL. As for other defensemen who could be on the move, you have pending UFA's Goss Despair and Stetcher probably drawing a bit of interest. Goss Despair has done amazingly with the Arizona Coyotes, been a force on the power play, looks like the Philadelphia Fly, and Goss Despair who put up 60 points. So, Goss Despair has looked great. I still think that a trade is probably likely but also probably closer to the deadline, probably sometime in January, February. So not anywhere close right now, but Gosses Bear, once again, is another guy to keep an eye on. As for Troy Stetcher, too, Stetcher's a pending UFA. He's done really well this year. Stetcher's been playing top four minutes with the Arizona Coyotes since signing his one-year deal with him, and I think he could be another good, cheap trade deadline acquisition for a contending team. He's got $1.2 million cap hit, so it shouldn't be too hard to move him, but Stetcher's another guy who I we should keep an eye on. And then the big one to keep an eye on is Jacob Chikrin. Now, there have not been too much Chikrin rumors in the first month of the season after a, a whole offseason full of Chikrin rumors due to the fact that he's still nursing an injury and 
he had not played any games. So a lot of teams were really concerned that if he's going to be injured, why would they trade for him? So Chikrin finally got into his first game. He's probably going to get into a couple more with the Arizona Coyotes. They got a few more games this week. They got a few more games next week. So don't expect something too sudden. But I do think that the Arizona Coyotes want this situation dealt with and dealt with soon. So I would not be surprised if Chikrin was dealt maybe before the December roster freeze. The the NHL freezes their roster over the Christmas break, usually around December 20th. I'm not exactly sure what time it is this year, but I would expect something to probably happen between now and that trade freeze then. I think Chikrin really wants out. It's a distraction for the Arizona Coyotes. They've done well this year, as I said. Not great, but well, given the circumstances. And I think that moving Chikrin and getting away from that distraction would be pretty good for the Arizona Coyotes. But they need a huge return, so... What could be some teams interested? In my opinion, there are five teams who make a lot of sense in my eyes. That is the St. Louis Blues, LA Kings, Ottawa Senators, Boston Bruins, and Winnipeg Jets. The Blues definitely need another defenseman. Their defense has been good and bad this year. They have a lot of injuries. Peronovic and Scandella are still going to be out for a few months. Peronovic was supposed to stake strides this year. That left side isn't the best with Letty and Krug on it. And I think they could use another defenseman. I think Chikrin could be a good piece for the St. Louis Blues. It could be the missing piece. I think one more defenseman, a good top four defenseman, could put this team over the top and be a good contender. They would probably have to give up quite a lot. I would sink probably their first round pick. Uh, probably a, a cap dump like Marco Scandella maybe. And then maybe a young prospect. I would probably have to think maybe Jake Neighbors. I don't think they would want to do that, but maybe another young prospect and then another asset on that. So it would be pretty difficult, but I think the Blues would be a one team to watch. Another would be the Kings. Now the Kings, by far, I think, have the assets to pull off this trade, and they do need another defenseman. They have a good right side of their defense with guys like Jersey, Clark, Roy, Walker, Dowdy. They have a ton of right shot defensemen, but they don't have too many good left shot defensemen. They have Michael Anderson up. Alex Edler, who's getting up there in age, and in the minors, they still have Tobias Bjornfurt, who could still be a good third pair of defensemen, but they have no offensive superstars on the left side. So getting a guy like Chikrin could really help round out the Kings team. Like I said, they have a lot of defensemen, so maybe moving a guy like Walker or Roy, or maybe even Dursey in a trade, uh, moving their first round pick, they look like a playoff team this year, so I don't think that's going to be too uh, much of a problem if the Kings decide to do that. Uh, they have a lot of good top-end center prospects, uh, Alex Turcotte, Tyler Madden, Akil Thomas, to name a few, maybe include one of those top-end center prospects in the trade, and then maybe one more asset. But I think the Kings have what it takes to pull it off, and they have a need for Chikrin, so I think that that is a team to watch out for. Ottawa is another one. Now, Ottawa seems to be out on Chikrin right now. The price is too high for them. But I think Arizona was to go away from trying to get a top-end prospect like Pinto or Sanderson, they could maybe work out a trade. I think if the Sens were to offer up a first-round pick, uh, maybe like a Lassie Thompson on the defensive end, and maybe like a Ridley Gregg or a Robbie Gervonta or a Igor Sokolov, maybe one of those three could be included in another asset. I think that would be enough for Arizona. I think Arizona's asking price now is too high, but I think if... Ottawa would offer that up. I think Arizona would be definitely intrigued. As for the other two, I think it's a lot less likely that Boston or Winnipeg try to acquire Chikrin, but I see the need for each of those teams. I think Boston is doing really well this year, and they are definitely going to be buyers by the looks of it at the end of this year. But I think that a Chikrin would help improve that blue line a lot. I think if they were to move maybe a Brandon Carlo, who's a really good top for the fenceman as well, maybe one of Lysel or Beecher, I know that's probably not what they want, but they probably have to move a top end prospect like that. Their first round pick and maybe another asset, I think that could probably do it for Arizona. But I think that Austin's probably going to maybe be in the conversations. It wouldn't shock me if they were, but I wouldn't be too surprised if they weren't with the asking price as high as it is. And then with the Winnipeg Jets, I know they haven't been a team linked to Chikrin, but I think there's a fit there. The Jets really want to improve their defense, I think. I still think that's the weak point of their team. So getting a guy like Chikrin could help them. Maybe move a guy like Dylan back for cap reasons. 
maybe include a first round pick, maybe include Ville Hainala, who's been in rumor bill a little bit over the last few weeks and could definitely also benefit from a fresh start. Maybe move him if you're going to get a guy like Chickren and another asset. And maybe those four are enough to get Chickren. I think Winnipeg could be a, a little bit of an underdog team here. I don't I don't have any reports to say that Winnipeg's interested. But I do see a fit with Chicken and Winnipeg, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were end up being t- trade partners. So Chicken Talk's definitely going to be heating up over the next week, and maybe a little bit farther, and I do not see this carrying on too long. I think Chicken's going to have to get into a few more games for teams to decide, okay, he's ready, he's back, he's okay, he's healthy. But probably in the near future, I think the Chicken trade will happen, and we should all keep an eye out for when it does. And lastly, I want to talk about the Canucks and the Blue Jackets. Now, there have been a few reports over the past week and a half, two weeks, that the Vancouver Canucks and Columbus Blue Jackets might be talking trade. And it could be around Bo- Horvat. But in my opinion, I don't think any of these Jackets Canucks talks are around Horvat. For one, I don't even think the Canucks are seriously considering any trade talks around Horvat right now. I know it would have to be a huge package that blows them away for them to trade Horvat, but I still think the main priority is to keep him. He's their captain. He's a good center. I know that they don't have really much of the, any cap space for him right now, but really, I think that if they were to trade Horvat, it would be right around the deadline. It won't be anywhere close right now. I know that they're trying to shake things up a little bit in Vancouver. They're not doing too well this year, but... I still think if Horvat is to be traded, and I do think it's a little bit more likely now than it was in the offseason, it's going to be probably closer to the tr- March 3rd de- trade deadline. So probably somewhere in maybe late January, early February, if it were to happen, maybe closer to March. But definitely don't think a Horvat trade is what they're discussing right now. And secondly, the Jackets are a team who is one of the worst in the NHL. There makes no sense for them to trade any assets for Horvat. I know they have a weak center group right now. But for now, they still have a guy like Cole Sillinger who can be a top-line center eventually. And Kent Johnson can also play center. So I, well, I wouldn't say they have a weak center group. i say they have a young center group. So even though acquiring a guy like Horvat would definitely help this team, I don't think it's the right move. Definitely, if he's still a pending restricted free agent, it makes no sense for them. And even if they were to negotiate and get a contract extension in place before the trade goes and then sign him to like a seven, eight year deal once they acquire him, I still don't think that that would be the smartest move for the Jacks because they would probably have to part with, in my opinion, probably three to four good pieces to get Horvat. And if Horvat is really not going to be re signed by the Canucks, why not just wait till the offseason where you can sign him for nothing. So I don't think Horvat is going to be the one they're talking about here. I've done a little bit of research to see who could maybe be involved. And I would probably say maybe it's around Jack Roslick. Roslick has not had the best start to the season this year. Only six points in 15 games. He's on pace for less than he had in the shortened season a few years ago. And has not done too well. He's even been a healthy scratch for a couple games. So... Hopefully, Roslovic can be good, but, but it does sound like the Canucks did show some interest in Roslovic over the offseason, and Roslovic, as much as he is not too good, is a good third-line center. I think that the Jackets could maybe use a little bit more cap flexibility, especially if they're going to go after a top-line center in maybe free agency next year or via trade, and I think that Roslovic's $4 million cap is a little bit steep for them, so maybe instead of using him as a bottom six forward, because I think their top six is pretty decent for the next few years. And if you add a top line center, that's going to improve them a lot more. But if you look at this team, I think that maybe Roslovic to Vancouver is more likely than Horvat to Columbus. I don't know what other pieces would be involved. Maybe the Jackets do want to improve a little bit on the blue line. Maybe they want to try and get a veteran type guy like Tyler Myers. I know that would be a little bit out there, but... Even though Myers is making $6 million and isn't the best, he's still a pretty good defenseman. So I wouldn't be too surprised if the talks were around Roslovic, maybe Myers, something around there, maybe something to improve the Canucks' third-line center, because I think Roslovic could be good there on like the third-line center for the Canucks. I know they tried Miller, Horvat, and Pedersen as their top three centers earlier in the year, but Miller doesn't work too well as a center, he's more of a winger, so maybe acquiring a guy like Roslovic could be a third-line center, could help them. I know the Jackets have a younger decor, 
and Myers, I know, has a really high cap hit, but maybe if the Canucks retain a little bit of salary, maybe Jackets could make do with the Myers on maybe like a second pair for them. I don't know. This is just me spitballing here, but I don't think the trade is about Horvat. It would not surprise me at all if the trade talks between Vancouver and Columbus were a little bit more around Roslovic and maybe the Blue Jackets trying to improve their banged-up blue line, especially with guys like Wierenski out for the season. So I would not be surprised if the talks were around Roslovic, maybe Myers, or the Canucks trying to move one of their defensemen to Columbus. But definitely don't think it's about Horvat, and I think if the Horvat trade would happen, it's closer to the deadline. So that's all I want to talk about today. Remember to like this video and subscribe. I also do a blog, which I will leave in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for next video. See you guys soon.